the sacred white pine, reaching heights of up to 150 feet. Hello, this is White Wolf, Ways of the Wild Institute here in the mountains of Vermont. This tree right here, the white pine, has been known for its medicinal qualities for tens of thousands of years. Native people of this country have used its medicine and respected it with the highest respect for a very long time. And even today, those who know of its medicinal qualities still seek it out. The sap of the white pine is very drawing. And if you've wandered through the woods where there are white pines, um, and just to make it clear, the white pine, I have seen them from Canada um, all the way down into uh, northern Georgia. Um, I've even seen pi uh, white pines as far west as uh, Iowa. It's not many, but I've seen them uh, as far west as Iowa. So they're, they're quite, um, quite dispersed for the kind of tree that they are. However, you, uh, you won't find them flourishing too much in the south because they do not tolerate hot weather uh, very well. They enjoy the cold weather um, and lots and lots of moisture. But those of you who have seen a lot of white pines, you'll notice that along the bark and where the branches come out, you'll see a lot of sap seeping out of the tree because they have so much excess. And the sap is very medicinal. Um, now, also to make it known, I have used all parts of the white pine that are medicinal for medicinal purposes. And um, I have never been disappointed with the results. Like I said, the sap is very drawing. How you use the sap is you warm it up. You heat it um, because it can get quite sticky and then it can get really, really hard. But if you heat it up, it melts down like honey or maple syrup. And if you let it cool just slightly so it doesn't burn your skin, um, if you have deep embedded splinters or abscesses, boils, that kind of thing, um, some type of an infection with a broken skin surface, you can actually apply the sap, a warm fluid sap over that area and then cover it and leave it. And that sap will draw the splinter, the pus, any kind of infection right out of the skin and into the sap. Um, so for drawing purposes, it works wonderful for that. Uh, I've used that many times uh, for that purpose, uh, specifically splinters. Works a whole lot better than getting a needle and digging down in there forever trying to get the thing out. <clears throat> the sap has also been used, um, and I have not used it for this because I do not have rheumatism, but um, it has been used and uh, documented for people who have rheumatism. Um, actually doing the same thing, warming it up, cooling it down just slightly, and then applying it over the affected area and wrapping it. See, the pine trees, the evergreen trees in general, are filled with tannic acid. And uh, it's very stringent, very potent, very drawing. And so anytime you have the tannic acid content combined with the um, the rest of the medicine, the, the spirit energy of the tree itself. It can help to um, take out inflammation and pains. And this is one reason that it was used for um, uh, rheumatism. <clears throat> and since it's drawing, it's also very good for bruises. Uh, if you have any kind of bruise or, or inflammation, if you apply that sap and leave it, you know, cover it up and leave it, it will actually draw the circulation to that area and help it heal faster and actually draw out the stagnant energy which causes the inflammation. Now the, uh, 
the twig. I'm not talking about the needles, I'm talking about the twigs, which are found at the end of the branches and have the needles growing off of them. So the twig, uh, now you can combine the needles and the uh, inner bark, the cambium layer, with twig tea. But specifically, the twig tea, alone or combined with needle or bark, uh, is, uh, is very good for treating um, a lot of lung ailments, congestions, lung swelling, mucus buildup in the lungs, um, spasmodic lung, um, as well as kidney ailments. Uh, kidney infections and kidney swellings. The tea made from the twigs. Um, again, you break the twig off and then you let that steep. All right, you bring the water to uh, a boil and then you bring it off the, uh, the heat. And you throw your chopped up twigs, needles and bark in and you let it steep for about 20 minutes. And then you drink that three to four times a day until um, until your symptoms subside. Ravens are singing today. Now the needle tea, oh I should also mention that the uh, the twig tea can be very strong so if you drink if you drink it too strong it can actually uh, be used as uh, an emetic. It will make you vomit. All right? Um, so keep that in mind. If you're looking for that, great. If you're not, it could be kind of a surprise. So you might want to, um, uh, if you drink it and it just tastes too strong, water it down a little bit. It's not going to hurt. So the needle tea, these long, soft needles that blow like feathers in the wind. A handful of these needles chopped up and steeped in water that has been boiled and removed from the heat for about 10 minutes makes a highly nutritious tea. Um, that cup of needle tea will possess more vitamin C than if you had two medium-sized oranges. <clears throat> but also it's very good to counteract the effects of cold, uh, flus, lung, chest congestion. Um, it's very good for coughs. Uh, so if you have deep-rooted coughs, pine tea is an excellent way to get rid of things like that. Um, grip, anything like that, very good. Very good to counteract those effects. And the inner bark is used much the same way, but it's more strong. Uh, it's stronger than the needle. As in general, when you're working with medicines, the leaf is usually very similar to the bark tea, except the leaf is weaker than the bark. The bark is stronger and more potent, closer to the heart of the tree. Now you can mix and match any of these, but all parts of this pine tree and any evergreen is filled with vitamin C and vitamin A. Um, so very important to, uh, to understand while you're using it in a medicinal context. But the white pine, has been used for centuries, thousands and thousands of years, um, for all of those conditions, inflammations, swellings, embedded splinters, boils, abscesses, um, lung ailments, kidney ailments, coughs and flus, colds. Um, the inner bark was actually poulticed, stripped off the tree and then poulticed, and laid over the forehead and covered um, to draw out headaches. A lot of headaches are caused by an overabundance of circulation in the, uh, the head region. And so the tannic acid in the inner bark helps to draw out that excess, uh, thereby reducing and getting rid of the headache. So these are just some of the many uses of one type of tree, the white pine. If you wish to learn more about the medicines and edible qualities, of natural plants that grow in the wilds, come on and visit us up here in Vermont, Ways of the Wild Institute. I'm White Wolf, thank you for joining me.